Hello, my name is Brittany Robinson and I will be discussing the topic of discriminant analysis. The objectives of this presentation is to briefly discuss exactly what is discriminant analysis, to provide a life example that hopefully makes the concept more understandable, and lastly to discuss the interpretations and outputs from a sample discriminant analysis question. Discriminant analysis is used to predict membership or classification based on a con combination of continuous variables. According to the authors, discriminant analysis is appropriate when you want to predict which group participants will be in. It is also important to note that the sample size of the discriminant analysis should exceed the number of variables and it is suggested that the sample size be 20 for each variable. In discriminant analysis you are essentially discriminating against something or grouping them based on variables or other features. So let's look at an example. At one point we all would like to be owners of a home, car, or in some cases, both. But when you begin to attempt to purchase either, you are discriminated against. How are you discriminated against? By your credit score. Remember, discriminant analysis is used to predict membership based on a combination of continuous factors. So your membership or your classification in this example would be whether or not you will be approved for the home or the car or whether or not you would not be approved. The continuous variables are your salary, your years of experience on the job, your age, and your debt to income ratio. All factors that contribute to either a good or bad credit score. So again, discriminant analysis is used to predict which group participants will be in. Will you be in the good credit group or would you be in the bad credit group? So the question that needs to be addressed is what combination of gender, parents education, mosaic and visualization tests best distinguishes students who take Algebra 2 from those who do not. So in this scenario, your classification will be students who take Algebra 2 versus the students who do not take Algebra 2, and your variables, your continuous variables, will be gender, parents' education, mosaic, and visualization tests. We will use discriminant analysis instead of logistic regression because we have all continuous independent variables. Looking at this chart, the tolerance value, values are close to one and the VIF values are low for the independent variables. Colonarity is not seemingly a problem. Moving on to the next graph, box plots are used to examine outliers. So this scatter plot is the result of checking the assumption of homogene homogeneity of variance covariance matrices. The assumption is met in this case also. Moving to the next chart, this table is used to show which independent variable, gender, parents' education, mosaic pattern test, visualization test, which independent variables are significant predictors of themselves. Looking at the results, gender, parents' education, and visualization are all significant predictors by themselves, while mosaic, based on its value, is not. Looking specifically at the test results chart, 
This value indicates that the assumption has not been met based on the test results. The scatter plot shown and discussed earlier suggests that the assumption was not badly violated. So at this point, one could use logistic regression instead of discriminant analysis to see the degree to which the assumption was met. WIPS lambda can be used to compute an overall effect size for the analysis. This tells that the predictors significantly, significantly discriminate the groups. The canonical correlation value is derived by computing an effect size that describes the, variable, the variance associated with each discriminant function. Again, these values indicate that the predictors significantly discriminate the groups. Moving on to the summary discriminant functions. Analyzing the discriminant function coefficient tables, it shows that only parents' education and visualization are weighted heavily to maximize the discrimination between groups. Gender correlates with parents' education. It has a low function coefficient. Looking at the structure matrix chart, gender has a higher correlate, correlation, negative 0.45, because it is correlated with the discriminant function that best predicts who took Algebra 2 and who did not. So the results for this question. Discriminant analysis was conducted to assess whether the four predictors, parents' education, visualization tests, gender, and mosaic could determine those who took Algebra 2 versus those who did not. The authors of the text state that the standardized function coefficients which suggests that parents' education and the visualization tests contribute most to distinguishing those who took Algebra 2 from those who did not using these predictors. The correlation coefficients in the table ex indicate the extent to which each variable correlates with the resulting discriminant function. Note that even though gender did not contribute strongly to the discriminant function, it is moderately high, although negatively, correlated with the overall discriminant function. This last table shows the results that the discriminant analysis test correctly predicts 80% of those who did not take Algebra 2 and roughly 71% of those who did. Overall, 76% of the sample was classified correctly. The following table is a list of references that I've used. I hope this presentation has been clear. Thank you for watching.